And hello there everyone, my name is Tyler or Alpha Assault, and today I have for you guys some very special gameplay. This is the first full COD 4 gameplay I've posted up on my channel, and it is part 1 of my episode 1 series that I am now calling Reminiscing. And in this series, I'm going from COD 4 to Modern Warfare 3 and talking about the good and the bad of each of these Call of Duty's that we've seen so far and giving my opinion on them and what I thought they did right and wrong. So I want to remind you guys, this is just an opinion series and I'm just putting my opinion out there for you guys. So if you haven't seen the introduction to this series that I put up on my channel a couple days ago, I recommend that you go and check it out because it is very important and it's got some stuff in it that I'm not going to explain in this commentary because I don't have the time to. So I will leave a link in the description, an annotation, and I'll also put it as a video response if you guys haven't seen it. So please go check it out. Alright guys, so I'm going to talk about some of the innovations that COD 4 introduced into the Call of Duty series and why it became a trendsetter when it came to the Call of Duty series. So I think one of the first things it did right was definitely perks. Maybe it didn't get all the perks right in the sense that it uh, made some overpowered perks and some underpowered perks, but it introduced the first perks into the Call of Duty series. And this was new because before this, your character had no perks and was the same as every other one and was just running around and was just a regular guy. So in the second tier a lot of people would agree and say that uh, that stopping power is the dominant perk and I would agree and Juggernaut is definitely the runner-up. I think that maybe this could have been a little better balance. I kinda wish that they would have never put stopping power into Call of Duty but uh, I also understand the need for it because in a way even though perk 2 or the, the tier 2 is a little uh, unbalanced it also is balanced in the sense that it gave you one perk that was kind of the standard and without it a lot of people would have been running the UAV jammers so in that way it was kind of good and bad in my opinion um, I think it still could have been better but you know that's not for me to judge and I don't know how I would have done it but I always of course I always have ideas so, you know, this gave you a chance to really customize your character for the first time and make you different from everyone else and tailor your perk to your playstyle or maybe even your playstyle to the perk you chose. Of course, you know, this there were some areas that it definitely could have been improved, like with Martyrdom and Frags times 3 because the frag grenades in this game are extremely powerful and you have to really watch out for them when you're playing. Uh, that is a bit of an issue, but it's not too bad in my opinion because once you learn how to avoid them and you know where objects are that can block the grenades, grenades damage, then you know you're basically fine and you don't have to worry about it. So I never had a problem with it. The one thing I did have a problem with when it came to the grenades was the miracle grenades or Zeus grenades, as Blame Truth called them back in the back in the day. Uh, he was the first person I ever watched when it came to COD 4, and he's the one that actually really got me into COD 4. Um, so, the second thing I'm going to talk about is the killstreaks. I think the killstreaks were wonderfully done. I don't think they were overcomplicated or overthought through. I think they were thought through just to the right extent. And I think it was a great idea to have a to have three killstreaks that uh, that you got as you got consecutive kills. Because in other games that had not been done before, and this was the first Call of Duty that it had really been thought of or even worked on. So I don't think any of the killstreaks are particularly too overpowered. I think that uh, definitely the UAV tends to be the most powerful because it is the lowest, e most easily gotten. And most people, because they're using stopping power instead of UAV jammer, are caught in it and there's really not a lot they can do. So, you know, that does kind of uh, have its issues, but, you know, UAV jammer still is a nice block to it and if you're really good at flanking and you flank a lot then UAV jammer is definitely your perk. I think the airstrike could have been beefed up maybe just a tad but you know because sometimes it seems like I never get any kills with the airstrike and other days I get tons of kills with the airstrike like in this game. In this game I get two kills with each of my airstrikes I call in at the very minimum. I don't remember how many I got with the second one but uh, as you'll see here in a second the first one I get two kills with. So, 
You know, sometimes airstrike can seem really underpowered and you never get a kill with it. And sometimes you'll be using it and you just get kills for days with it. It's uh, really weird. I know that back in the day I heard Blame Truth complain a number of times about how there are some days his airstrike would just never get him a single kill. And he'd plant it right in the area that the enemies were. So in that way, maybe the airstrike could have been tweaked a little better. I know that I've actually run through airstrikes before and uh, not been hurt at all. So that's kind of funky, and I don't, I don't know what they were thinking there. So anyways, moving on, now I'm going to talk about the attachments. So big thing with the attachments is that before this, I'm pretty sure all you could do was attach or unattach the sniper scope to your sniper. I don't think there's anything more you could really do with attachments. If I'm wrong and any of you have played called Call of Duty 2, COD 2, then uh, please let me know because I never played it and this was my first Call of Duty. So it gave you, you know, the not only the customization of your perks, but also the customization of your attachments, which allowed for even more ability to tailor the game to your play style, which is really cool. And before that, you kind of had to tailor your game, your play style to the game instead. And in this way, allowed for more customization and things such as that. So I think they chose three great atta attachments. The I think the the team at Infinity Ward really thought through the attachments and made a great choice in them. I think having two optical sights for all of your weapons was a really good choice. I think that in some cases maybe they didn't fit the weapon very well, but still it gave you that option and maybe even that challenge for some of them. And I thought that was a great thing that they did. And I think they really thought that through and made the right decision there. So, you know, with each with the introduction of the silencer, it also introduced a lot of stealth into the game that you didn't have before. And uh, it definitely brought in a new element where you had to be paying a bit more attention and actually listen to your surroundings instead of just looking at the minimap or radar. I think that, you know, it made people with headsets definitely stand out because they can hear things like that. Or even people that just turned their TV up loud enough that they could hear something like that. I remember I, w I could hear uh, silencers just by turning my TV up loud enough. So I think that's what a lot of people also did. So that's going to be basically it with this part of the series. I'm going to talk next time, since I didn't have this time to talk about I'm going to talk about some of the overpowered things in this game. Originally I was going to do talk a little bit more about just like the things that I was doing at the time, you know, what I enjoyed most about the game, and I will, but um, I'm also going to get into some of the bad things about this game since I ran out of time this time. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. I put a lot of time and work into getting the footage for you guys. It took me two or three days to get the gameplays for you guys, and I really hope you enjoy them and appreciate all the hard work I put into this because I'm doing this all for you. And yes, it is fun to an extent, but it does get tiring playing Call of Duty and video games all the time because it can be rather frustrating. So guys, I want to thank you again for watching this. Tune in later because... Uh, I will definitely be putting up an annotation or a link to the second part in this video. It may be up later tonight or it may be up t uh, early tomorrow, but it will probably be up later tonight, so uh, check it out because it will be up soon after this because my schedule won't allow me to upload it tomorrow. Uh, so, um, well, I'll keep you guys up to date with uh, the series and the uh, new events going on. So. Be sure to uh, check out my Twitter if you want to stay up to date, and it's definitely the best way to stay up to date uh, as I talk about my previous video. So all right, guys, this is Tyler Alpha Assault, and for today I'm signing out. I hope you guys have a great day and enjoy, enjoy yourselves. See ya.